On this Fan Mail Friday, we answer some of your questions like, who will be the sixth starter for the Angels? Will the WBC benefit the Angels this season? And if the Halos get to the World Series, heck yeah, who will they face? It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen every day. Every show is free and available on all platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And you can help us out by giving us a rate and a review. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Thanks for being here with us for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day. Say it with us now. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Hey, it's our favorite day of the week because we get to answer the questions of our Locked On Angels listeners and viewers just like yourself. So thank you for submitting your questions. I love answering these questions, Mike, because... Uh, it feels good to be able to share our opinion and our thoughts on on this team and uh, uh, appreciate that people count on us for that sort of thing. So uh, it's really great. In fact, we got a great voicemail here from Tracy in Henderson, Nevada, going over a couple of things. So we're going to spend this segment where he talks about the keys to success in his eyes, and then we'll uh, give our response to that. So let's get into that voicemail right now. Hey guys, this is Tracy from Henderson, Nevada. Some keys, I think, to the season. Obviously, our top three are Trout, Otani, and Rendon. And I think if two out of those three have years approaching what they've done in the past, I think we'll be successful with whoever that third one is having a, a decent year. Um, I think a key is also going to be David Fletcher because without the shift anymore, and Fletcher makes contact, I think we're going to see him um, on base more and moving runners over. And I know you guys have talked about that in the in the past. I think a big key is the production at first base from Jared Walsh. Um, I know he was injured a lot last year, and we really didn't know the extent of his injuries until almost at the end of the season. So hopefully he's healthy right now. And the last thing is catching. If Ohapi is going to be our catcher, I'd like to see us move Matt Stassi. Stassi's a, um, a, a good catcher and um, could um, maybe uh, bring us some prospects, draft choices, or wherever we have a need. Because I think with Ice and Wallach, and I am high on Wallach in the little bit that we saw of him last year, I think those two guys can fill in as uh, the number two catching spot. So... Um, I think those things are all reasonable, and I think if they happen, um, I, I think we can improve by eight, ten ball games at least uh, over last year. Make it a great day and go Hales. Tracy from Henderson, Nevada, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us and giving us a call. It's always great to hear from you, my friend. Mike, we got to go down the list here talking about production yeah. from Trout, Otani, and Rendon. If at least two out of three of those guys have matched what they've done in the past, we're going to be pretty successful. What do you think about that? I, I like the idea. Here's my pushback. They had a great season. I know Trout only played 119 games, but they had a great season together last year. Hmm. And so if those two, Trout and Otani, have a great season and Rendon doesn't, I wonder if we're going to find ourselves struggling offensively. Now with hmm. Hunter Renfro in there and a healthy Taylor Ward, that may not happen. I think Rendon's got to have a great year. Yeah. I, I know that Trout's going to. I know that Otani's going to. I think Rendon's got to have a great year, John, just simply because he is a key piece to this offense. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned this last week on the pod where he's drawing walks and getting on base. He's probably not going to have this really high batting average, but I think he's going to have a high on base percentage. And mm -hmm. he's going to be somebody that's going to knock in some runs. And the stats that we've shared before is when – he's successful the angels are successful and so i don't think that you can just say two of those three i think all three of those guys have to have trout otani and rendon like years do you agree mm. do you disagree i think to push back on your pushback all right maybe i agree a little bit I, I, trout's got to play a full season yes it, for it can't sure. be 119 games it's got to yeah. be and even if it's like 140 games 
that's a full season in my eyes. Right. And so, yeah, I think, I think all three of these guys need to be firing on all cylinders. I, I would just hate to see one of them not producing. It, I mean, I trust Trout and Otani more than Rendon right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, and so, but I, I, I feel like, I think, okay, I think you're right. I think all three need to be productive, need to be in there, need to have success. But if somebody like Rendon inevitably messes up or fails or gets hurt or whatever, then we do have the backup to support him. Like you said, and Hunter Renfro playing the outfield, uh, a good bat in Brandon Drury, Gio Urshela. We're, we're not going from tier A to tier A to tier D. Like I always say all the time. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I think those are important keys. So I, I, I hear what Tracy's saying, but I, I desperately hope we have all three of those guys. That would be a, great. I would, I would really want that to happen. And he mentioned, David Fletcher, and you and I have been high on David Fletcher, excited about David Fletcher. John, my opinion has shifted a bit, not because mm. I'm not high on David Fletcher, but I've watched Brandon Drury, and I've mm -hmm. watched Gio Urshela this spring, mm -hmm. and quite honestly, even Louis Renjifo, and I'm like, man, F Fletch is backing up for me if mm -hmm. I'm going to put this lineup together because – I want Urshela's bat in there because he is actually hitting really well. Drury, I want to see what he can do. And I think I want to give a shot to Ren Hifo and mm. allow him to be in the lineup. And so I think that David Fletcher moves to maybe a, a backup role for this team, uh, whether it be second base, shortstop, or third base. It, am I wrong there? What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that that's correct. I think the main point here is that even if he is a backup, he's going to benefit from the fact that they can't shift on him. Yeah. And and my only thought there is just watching him in spring so far, it seems like he's getting the same David Fletcher style hits that yes. he's been getting with not a lot of power off the bat, a lot of bloops. I mean, he's got to hit the ball hard to get it through the hole in the infield yeah. to take advantage of that shift. And so I think Tracy's right on in the sense that like he should benefit from the lack of a shift but it's up to David to be able to benefit from the lack of shift. And, and that's, you know, obviously he makes contact, which is great, but he can't be popping out, flying out, hitting little bloops into the outfield where they're yeah. easy to catch yeah. because they figured out David Fletcher, right? They figured him out. And I think if he's able to hit hard ground balls, which his hard hit percentage is not very big and he does not have a lot of barrels in his career either. Right. Um, so he needs to be able to, get some really sharp base hits through the gaps in the infield to take advantage of the shift. So I think Tracy's right. Like he certainly can do it. It's up to David to be able to do it. And finally, this, this last point is interesting and I never really considered it until he brought this up, but trading Max Stassi hmm. uh, in favor of running out Logan O'Hoppy. Obviously that's something the angels are going to be doing, but then having Matt Theis, and Chad Wallach as the two and three or vice versa, uh, maybe getting something back for Max Stassi, maybe shedding a little bit of salary. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I think that feels like a move if we're not in contention. I think that they want Stassi and his veteran experience behind hmm. the plate. And I think that they want his bat, even though he struggled last season, he actually has shifted. I don't know if you saw this recently, but he has shifted now to have one leg where he's bending it and the other leg is straight out. His right yeah. leg is straight out. Yeah. And that actually is supposed to benefit his pop time and being able to read the pitch and being able to put it where it needs to be. And so I see Stassi wanting to grow. I see Stassi wanting to develop. I just don't know if it feels like that would be a wise decision for a team that really wants to make the playoffs. This feels like if we're not in the playoff run, yeah, then mm. we trade Max Stassi to get some draft picks and to shed some salary. So I, I think I would, I would disagree with Tracy on that one. It feels like a move that is on the table. Like it could potentially happen at some point, but perhaps it does depend on the circumstances around it. And, and, and personally, I'm excited for the tandem of Logan O'Hoppy and Max Stassi. Watch yeah. me, watch me hate saying that in May when I'm super frustrated <laughs> with Stassi, right? right. Like that's right. going to be the case, but yeah, I, I do think that there's a benefit of having, the veteran catcher there. And then Matt Theis is just a big question mark to me. Like it he seems is. like he just hasn't put it together. Maybe he needs his Taylor Ward season. I don't know what that looks like. Uh, and, and 
does he have to make the team out of camp in order to stick around? Or? I don't think he has any options. So I yeah. think he does have to make the team. Yeah. Uh, there's not a lot of room on this team anymore, Mike. I added right. it up the other day and uh, I, I think that even, even like Velasquez might be the odd man out when it comes yeah. to the infield. So right. Uh, yeah. Lots of decisions to be made, but Tracy, thank you for your voicemail and giving us some things to consider and some keys to success. And Hey, when we come back and when we continue on locked on angels coming up, we're going to give you an update on the Bally sports situation where you can watch angel games and how that's going to look in 2023. We'll talk about that coming up. Today's show is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious treat, and we know that you are, but you don't want all the fat and calories, of course you don't, then you got to try a Built Bar with Built Healthy is actually tasty. And what makes these bars so good? Well, for starters, and you've heard it on Locked on Angels before, they're covered in 100% real chocolate, and they come in really great flavors like peanut butter brownie and coconut almond. These bars taste like a candy bar while remaining healthy, only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And if you'd like to get a built bar here's the three ways that you can do it go to built.com they have a wide variety wide selection of bars and puffs and granola bars you can head to your nearest walmart they have four bar boxes of built bars at walmart with great flavors like cookies and cream double chocolate or coconut puffs or you could actually head to sam's club everybody loves sam's club right and you can grab a 13 bar box with all their hit flavors brownie batter and churro you're gonna love built bars you're gonna thank us later built bars built puffs you gotta try this Thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen today. And as we continue our Fan Mail Friday, we got some more questions from our Lockdown Angels listeners and viewers. Talking, bringing up some interesting points. Uh, talking about a sixth starter, talking about potential trades, things like that. So this first question, Mike, comes from CoolBrad84124 on Instagram. He said, who will be the sixth starter? Canning, Davidson, or Silseth? I think that you have to go with Davidson to start hmm. one because he doesn't have any options. So you made a trade for him. You got rid of Rysel Iglesias and you brought him over. So I think that you have to give Davidson the, the, the shot. Second hmm. reason is he's pitched seven innings as of this recording mm -hmm. and has looked fantastic. He has looked really, really good. He's working on a sweeping curveball that mm -hmm. has really baffled a lot of pitchers or a lot of batters. And so I think that he is actually really taken the lead here in that sixth starter spot. I am a fan of Chase Silseth and Silseth actually on, what was it Wednesday? He went four innings and has gone the longest of any starter so far and looked better than he did in his first start. Mm -hmm. And isn't that Chase Silseth? What we've learned about him is that he has games where he just looks like an ace. Hmm. And then he has games where he really looks like an angels pitcher, right? <laughs> and he, he looks like somebody that's still trying to figure it out, which he's young and he, yeah needs time to figure it out, which is why I don't think that you rush Chase Silseth up to the major leagues and put him in that position. I think you let him get some work in the minor leagues. You mentioned when we were on the show with Bryce on, on uh, a couple days ago, yesterday's show, uh, that we like, we have all of this pitching depth and, and we don't realize that we have this pitching depth and Chase yeah. Silseth is a part of that. Griffin Canning did look good in his first start. I, again, I think he needs some time. I think he needs some development, which is why I go back to Tucker Davidson. I think Tucker needs to be out of the gate, that sixth starter, mm. because we're only going to need that sixth starter 16 times this season. And then I think Tucker can actually be a middle reliever or a long reliever, somebody that can step in if the game is out of reach, whether we're up by a lot or they're up by a lot. Sixth starter, 16 times. Say that 16 times fast, right? <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to either. Mike, okay, first of all, I, I will say this. It's great that we're having this conversation. It's great that we yeah. have options. Yeah. I was uh, perusing Angels Reddit. I love being on Angels Reddit. Great community there. They said, I'm really glad that we're talking about the number six spot instead of hoping that Michael Lorenzen becomes a star. Ah. which is where we were last year. Yep. And don't get me wrong. I, I liked Michael Lorenzen. I thought he did a great job. The and injury was unfortunate. Yeah. And biceps Lorenzen. <laughs> and, uh, but the fact remains that we're having this conversation, I think is a very good thing. And of course it revolves around the fact that the angels have a starting rotation of one through five yeah. because they will only need a number six starter 16 times or so this season because of the way that they're, working around Shohei and trying to get him the same amount of rest, but more 
uh, more time on the mound, which yeah. I think is a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. So just the fact that we're having this conversation is a good thing. And m- having to make a tough decision is a good thing. I hear you about Davidson and Perry trading uh, Rysel and getting him back. Remember, they got uh, Jesse Chavez as well, who was supposed to help us in the bullpen <laughs> and did not. And then yeah. immediately went back to the Braves. And did well. Uh, and and did well, of course. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. the Angels and Jesse Chavez never works out. No. But the other thing is, is that if, if that's your reason for keeping somebody around, I, I don't buy that. I, I mean, yes, it might give Perry egg on his face, but look what he did with Pujols. Look what he did with Justin Upton. Look what he did with those situations where it's like, oh, you got to have this guy on your team. Look how much money they're making. And, and, and they cut him. They let yeah. him go. Yeah. Because there were other better options. Now, having said that, and the way that spring training has shaken out so far, I think Tucker Davidson is probably the best option for number six. And to carry him on the 26-man roster, I think, is important, too. So, with that said, I feel like, for me personally, it's a little too soon to decide. Because, on one hand, Griffin Canning has a lot of the Major League experience. Now, he hasn't pitched since 2021. His first yeah. start was, you know, a couple days ago. But also, Davidson has some postseason experience, right, with the Braves. And so, uh, there's, there's, that's a good thing on on both sides. I think that's pros for both of those guys. For me, at least, Chase Silseth, I think, should spend some more time in the minors. No sense in rushing that guy. Let him develop. Let him be the future ace of the staff that he can be and really decide between Canning and Davidson. If I have to pick right now, I I would say Davidson at the end of the day. You know what's interesting about this conversation is the thing that I haven't heard, and it's been quiet, and I'm surprised, Hmm. is that all of the starters after Shohei are left-handed. I have not heard a narrative or a conversation Hmm. from reporters or people that watch this team outside of you and I just talking about it that they're all left-handed and that don't we need a right-handed starter in there, but it doesn't seem like that's pressing. It doesn't seem like that's something they're considering. It doesn't Hmm. seem like they're even, even worried about that, Hmm. that they have all of these. And I guess I, gosh, I mean, Detmers and Sandoval and, and Tyler Anderson and even Jose Suarez, they're all really great pitchers. And I think Sandoval and Detmers are going to have phenomenal years. So maybe that's why they're not, too worried about it. I just, I, I wonder if that is an issue and if that might lean in Griffin Canning's direction, why we've talked about Griffin Canning or even Chase Silseth. Yeah. I, I still would go with Tucker based off of what I see at spring training, but does that concern you at all that we don't have another right hander in this starting rotation? It does. I mean, that would give me a point in Griffin Canning's direction. I, I actually was thinking about this today and I want to do some research here on who we need to worry about, because off the top of my head, I think about Jose Abreu, who is now with the Astros, crushes lefties. Yeah. And so I I think you and I need to do a deep dive into, you know, what that would look like for the Halos going against some of these these tough hitters. Hey, uh, El Nino Tech 11 on Instagram said, are the minor leaguers having good springs becoming trade bait? I think that's an excellent question. What do you think? Well, I think that it, if it is trade bait, it's going to be something that really will benefit us at the trade deadline as we're looking for maybe another right-handed starter or maybe another bullpen piece. Yeah. I think some of these young guys coming through is exciting because I think it's an, it's an example of the development that actually is now taking place in the minor leagues. Mm -hmm. And I think what it also does is it gets eyes on our minors and perhaps they start ranking these guys a bit higher than right. they've been ranked in the past. Right. I think at this point, the the three guys that are ranked in the top 100, I think the only guy that I would say would be trade bait would be Edgar Caro. Mm-hmm. I think that he's the guy that you would send off to try to bring in somebody else mm-hmm. so that you can benefit the major league roster. I think the other guys outside of the top 100 in major league baseball for, for clarity I think that those guys would have to be packaged with another guy or maybe a Max Stassi, as we mm-hmm. talked about in, in the first segment. And so I'm glad that they're playing well. I think it does get eyes on them. And I'm curious as to if anybody is actually looking at the Jordan Adams mm-hmm. of of the minor leagues instead of just an Edgar Caro. I'll say this. And when the Angels drafted 19 pitchers in 2021, 
And everyone said, what the heck are they doing? My response to that was pitching is always in vogue. Like right. Other teams are always going to need pitching. Yeah. So you can convert the pitchers that you drafted to position players. And I think that as we continue to see these young arms who were excited to be on the major league team, and we certainly need them, but I think there's enough there to where if the angels need to make a move, you can convert one of those pitching prospects and trade them for the position player or bat that the angels will need. And maybe it's for the major league team, or maybe they notice, Hey, we don't have a lot of third basemen in our minor leagues, right? I'm just going off the top of my head. Sure. But they can, they can move one of those pitchers and get somebody back that is a prospect. Somebody that they're excited about uh, who can play third base or whatever the case may be. You can convert those pitching arms into prospects at other positions. And I think that this is actually taking place in the sense that a lot of these guys are having great springs. And so you could trade from areas, trade from areas of excess, right? We have a lot of middle infielders, outfielders, and and some good arms out there that you could get back uh, what you need when the time comes. Lockdown Angels is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. NBA teams are preparing for the playoffs, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just download the FanDuel sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes made, plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets with a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance at a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Getting into the last section of our conversation, our last segment, we've got three great questions here, Mike. This comes from Eggy Nicky on Instagram, he said, does the WBC help the Angels players come back to the team with a fire to help boost the team? Well, we just got through talking about that the other day with Mike Trout and being the captain of Team USA, but I agree. I think that that is the case with these players who are part of the WBC. They can come back with energy and enthusiasm. What are your thoughts? they're certainly going to come back ready for the season because Mm -hmm. they're going to be in high intensity games and are going to have a good eye for pitching already. And so I, I I think I said it again, I said on Monday, I'll say it again. I think Trout and Otani are going to come back and probably have a really spectacular April Mm -hmm. unless they're exhausted and then they need some time off. Right. But I think somebody's hurt because they throw up and into Trout. Please please don't do that. Yeah. Trout needs to just be like, like, wrapped up in bubble tape or well, bubble hit him in the elbow pad. Cause he knows yeah. that it's coming. So we did, least... I think everybody held their breath. And when we saw him kind of just take it off and nonchalantly yeah. walk down to first, everybody went, Oh, thank the Lord. I but know. I think that it actually is going to be interesting to see what happens in April. If they come back, it, I, I could see them already being in mid season mode, mm-hmm. which perhaps is a really good benefit for the halos. Cause trout, he always gets off to kind of a good start but notoriously has those moments where he has stretches where he's, you know, he's one for four. He's, he's, Mm -hmm. he's one for three. I I think that we're going to see him maybe make some more contact, maybe hit some more home runs Mm -hmm. could have a really spectacular April, which will get us all really hyped and really hopeful for the playoffs. And uh, speaking of playoffs, Johnny, yeah. Ben Wasabi from Instagram actually well, Bobby asked this Wasabi. <laughs> Bobby, uh, Bobby Wasabi. There, there goes those 43 year old eyes again. If go. the Angels make the World Series, can we just pause there for a moment? Mm. The Angels make the World Series. Drink it in. How old were you when the Angels made the World Series in 02, John? Uh, 13. Yeah, 13 yeah. going on 14. I was 22. <laughs> I just, just got married. That was a good time. Yeah, now I'm 34, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, let's go back. So if the Angels make the World Series, what team do you think they would face? Look, I, I mean, this is this is fantasy booking because I think that the NL is, there's so many good teams. Number one, I would say it'll be interesting to see what the Mets do yeah. this season. I think that they... Obviously, getting Justin Verlander and you know retaining a lot of the same players that they had last season, but losing to Grom. I mean, in some ways, you could say, oh, that's just lateral movement. But I mean, they spent a lot of money to build yeah. this team, and yeah. I, I have to laugh if 
they spend all that money and and nothing really comes of it. Something's got to come from the Mets, but also the the Phillies got better, mm-hmm. and I think that they you know getting there last year, um, they were competitive in the World Series. It just I mean now with Trey Turner, like you've just added so much to that team just by virtue of that. Uh, I would love to see a freeway World Series. Uh, I don't know what the Dodgers are going to look look like this season, considering that they haven't spent a lot of money. Um, they they've lost a lot of their key players, uh, whether that's through free agency or or injury. Um, so it's going to be an interesting uh, National League. Maybe even the Braves. Maybe even yeah. the Braves can get back to that. So yeah, uh, if I if I had the choice, I would love to see a freeway World Series. But I also think. Angels Mets is interesting considering, yeah. you know, the dynamic of Angels, Dodgers, Mets and Yankees. Uh, so th- those are th- those are the matchups that would intrigue me the most if the Angels were able to get there. Yeah, I think my my dream would be Angels Cubbies uh, just because of my friend Neil uh, that I grew up with was my oh, best yeah. man at my wedding. I, I would love to see the Angels and the Cubs because he's a Cub fan. And he does a um, killer Harry Carey, by the way. He does a great Harry Carey. Well, I'm on the show just for that. Uh, I, I, I can honestly see the Dodgers, John, and here's why I can see the Dodgers. They didn't actually go out and spend all the money that they normally spend. Mm-hmm. And wouldn't it be just so ironic that <laughs> they actually Dodgers. right? They make the playoffs because when you think about like the 88 Dodgers, Mm-hmm. And the fact that they won that season, Kurt Gibson was on that team and was injured and he had a great year, but he wasn't like a spectacular player. Mm-hmm. And the reason why they got there was because of their pitching and the Dodgers mm-hmm. always have really great pitching. So I'd right. love to see a freeway series and it would be a mess where you live and it would be a mess where I live because we would all just be in this panic mode of yeah. wanting our team to actually get a victory. So that I think would be really great to see an angels Dodgers world series. Absolutely. Hey, Steve Han seven on Instagram said any updates to the broadcasting situation. I'm planning on getting the Bally streaming app. So actually I reached out to Steve as soon as I got this question, because I didn't want him to wait until fan mail Friday, but I said, don't get the Bally sports subscription, the streaming subscription, because even though they have Bally sport West, they are not showing Angel games. So yeah. let me make that clear to everybody. The Bally Sport streaming service, Bally Sports Plus, is not currently showing Angel games. They haven't yet. They are they the website does not have any information on the Angels. Uh, they've specified the teams, the MLB teams for other Bally networks that do have games on their service, but the Angels do not. So Bally Sports Plus, the streaming service, will not have Angel games. So far, so far. Yeah. Now, yeah. the alternative here is if Bally's goes goes out of business, then it sounds like the blackout restrictions of MLB TV will go away. Thank goodness. That'd be great. Hallelujah. Should have happened a long time ago. Exactly. They probably wouldn't be bankrupt. Yeah. But, but then the other thing is MLB TV will then be able to show Angel Games locally so you won't have to be out of state to watch angel games you'll be able to watch local games because the blackout restrictions will be gone however that's if bally's goes out of business right now i think at&t cable direct tv another cable you could also get direct tv stream which is kind of like youtube tv hulu tv that sort of thing those are going to have valley sports west and you'll be able to watch games through there i you know Hate to see people lose their job or whatever, but I would love the blackout restrictions to go away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen today. Now for your second listen, check out the Lockdown Fantasy Baseball podcast. You can win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every single day. You can find the Lockdown Fantasy Baseball podcast wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. And they're a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Be sure to give us a follow at Lockdown Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. We love interacting with you there. Hey, Mike, what have we got on deck for Monday's show? I'm really loving Monday's, John, because we get to recap weekend baseball. That's but right. We'll also talk about Team USA and the WBC on mm-hmm. Monday. What did Mike Trout do? What did 
Shohei Otani do? What did David Fletcher do? What did Patrick Sandoval do? Mm-hmm. He's going to be starting for Mexico. So we're going to talk all about that on Monday on Lockdown Angels. Yeah, Team USA versus Team Mexico. I think it's sold out. So that's exciting. Yeah. So yeah. we're looking forward to the weekend. We hope you have a great weekend. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Have yourselves a terrific weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.